Howdy folks, John here. In today's video, we'll be removing a 235-45 R20 tire from an alloy wheel using a manual tire changer with a duck head modification attachment. I'll be showing you the duck head mod kit, how it functions, along with some tips to help you decide if you think one of these manual tire changers with a duckbill mod will work for your tire changing needs, or if you simply want to understand the process a little bit better. Let's get started. Before getting to the actual tire dismounting, I thought I'd go over what I'm going to be using here. So, first thing, of course, is the uh, duck head or duck bill mod. Now, you can build these yourself. There's really not much to them. I ended up purchasing mine, though, from an eBay seller here in Canada. I will have links to all this stuff below in the description if you want to check it out. And I got uh, his primarily because he is located in Canada. I don't have to pay import fees. Probably the best one out there, in my opinion, is made by Lucid Auto Works. And I've actually modded my mod to uh, be more like his by using shaft collars and thrust bearings. Just show that in a bit here. But these all work the same way. They sit on the center post that comes with your manual tire changer. And it's just an arm at a right angle that pivots around the center post and then You've got a bracket on it that can slide in and out for your specific uh, diameter of wheel. And then the actual duck bill or duck head. This is what uh, makes the magic possible. This you can adjust up and down in this clamp system for your height of wheel. The reason I didn't get Lucid's AutoWorks one is because he doesn't ship to Canada. And I also found out his system wouldn't fit my specific manual tire changer because these center tubes, they will vary in diameter a little bit. His comes with clamps and everything, which are sized for the tube. So all I've done with mine is, I've just removed all the paint off this so this can rotate freely. I just 3D printed up some bushings, made these on Tinkercad for the right diameter to fit over my tube, and then just pressed them into the mod tube. So now it's a nice snug fit. Over top, I actually had to shorten it too, so it would fit over my center tube. And then I've got thrust bearings at the bottom, a shaft collar clamp at the bottom. So it's a nice snug fit. You don't want much play in there, of course. You want your duckbill to ride, you know, smoothly in a nice arc around your wheel. And then just get another thrust bearing. Oops. Thrust ring bearing on the top there. And then we put our other collar clamp on, good to go. And then this just, uh, once these are clamped, you just leave this all attached to that center tube. You don't have to worry about it. And then you just screw this on and off like you normally would on your manual changer. In addition to your duckbill mod, you're going to need some centering cones or a centering cone. And this will center the wheel on your manual tire changer, which is important because of course your duckbill is going around in an even circle. So you want that wheel perfectly centered. So the wheel, the rim of the wheel is always right in the notch here of the duckbill. And I just made these on Tinkercad again, 3D printed them. Uh, Lucid Auto Works, he has nice machined aluminum ones, but again, they weren't the right size to fit my center post. So yeah, you kind of have to know that center post diameter so this will fit over top of it. And then you just, when that clamps down, this also holds the wheel against the plate. And then you've got that little pin that comes through so the wheel can't turn. Some people bolt their wheels down, but I've been finding that uh, this works fine. And full disclosure here, the wheel we're gonna do today, the wheel I'm gonna demo is gonna be my third attempt. The first two, uh, second one went okay, but the first one, there's a learning curve to this. In addition to all that, you're going to need a tire iron. People are recommending this specific two foot one or 24 inch one. Again, these are pretty generic. A link will be down in the description, but uh, found that uh, the shallow curved end is what you're gonna be using. That's what you hook under the bead and get on your duck bill. You'll see it in operation. And then you pull the bead over top of the little duck head there. So you don't use this little hooked end at all. At least I haven't. I've just been using the shallow one. I had these smaller tire irons and they didn't work at all. So you pretty much need the big boy. 
And last up, you're going to need some kind of tire lube or tire snot. Whatever tire lube you like using, I'm sure it's all pretty much the same. As I stated in the part one video, my primary reason for doing this is out of complete necessity. I live in a remote location. The one tire shop here, he won't even touch low profile tires anymore. I am stuck. I was even considering getting a powered tire machine. Uh, you know, the Mayflower ones in the States, you can pick them up pretty cheap, but no such luck here in Canada. You know, I'd be into it for about three, thirty-five hundred bucks, and I just don't have the room for it. So that's why I got one of these uh, manual changers. But of course, the other reason we do this kind of stuff, like I said in part one, DIYers, you get to take your time, do it right, hopefully do it better, and hopefully not scratch the hell out of the wheels. Speaking of which, let's get to it. So the first step in removing a tire is of course breaking the bead. So I thought I'd talk about the mods I've done to the bead breaker here to make it a little more usable. Again, in my application. Uh, out of the box, these just come with the flat steel bars on each side. And I've just basically welded another piece of flat bar on the front here to make it basically an angle iron to give it a little more strength. I read reports where just having the straight flat bar on the sides these things could sometimes buckle. Around the foot here, this is just window washer fluid bottle plastic. Just cut up a window washer fluid bottle and uh, wrap the plastic around the foot so it doesn't scratch the rims. I was going to 3D print a foot or something, but uh, this seems to be working fine. It's cheap, it's easy to replace as it wears out. Oh, and I also had to lower the pivot point. There's two holes up top here, but I found with uh, those two holes there, to get it to clear, you know, taller profile wheels and tires, you had to have this bar up really high at a really acute angle and you wouldn't get much leverage. What I found to be a pain is when you're breaking the bead and you have to move the tire around, holding this out of the way is a pain in the butt. It kept falling down, you could mark the tire up. So what I'd like to do is get two really strong rare earth magnets, one on the bar, you know, epoxy it right on and then epoxy one on the bottom of the plate so it will hold it out of the way. Other thing you'll notice if you're doing alloys is <laughs> you have to protect obviously the wheel from getting scratched. And out of the box it comes with this little triangle that's welded on there to keep the wheel from sliding back. That will certainly scratch the hell out of your alloys. These cross braces are exactly the same height as a standard 2x4. So originally I was just going to have some 2x4s around it, you know, so the wheel is nice and flat in relationship to the bead breaking bar and the lower bar, but this bolt was going to scratch the wheel as well. So what I did is I just got some 1x4 then, screwed it on top of the 2x4s and then I'll have just a little piece of 1x4 on here. So everything's going to be level, you know, I can place my wood blocks, something like that, depending on wheel size. That's why I didn't want to make something that was a fixed size. And then I just use this, uh, you know, these are these foam two by two uh, relief mats. And I can just set the wheel on there. It's nicely supported, nicely protected from scratching. So first step is to remove the valve stem or the valve stem valve, I guess, is more accurate. Now the next step, using your tire snot of choice, is to just get some uh, lube down in the bead to hopefully aid with the bead removal process. Now I find that geometry is kind of important here. You want a slight forward angle so it's driving the bead breaker wedge down this way and not back. And you may have to do this and work your way around the tire several times. You're probably not going to break it in one go. Kind of have to let that uh, tire snot work its way around the bead especially on these big low profile tires. And then what I'll do is I'll just move the tire to a different quadrant, reposition our foot, getting that angle instead of slight forward angle. We'll work at it again.
and if it's really stubborn you might have to let it sit for a while to allow the tire lube to work its way into the bead there we go and you'll find once you uh, get it off that first bead you don't need the big bar anymore for leverage you can probably just do it by hand and you notice I started on the back first that seems to be what most are recommending there we go so it actually works quite well at breaking the bead okay and just like the back got our tire snot all the way around the bead got a slight forward angle on the bead breaker bar just slowly work it around again giving the snot time to penetrate into the bead and see if this was to fall down now you could scratch the wheel so got to get something better in there two big rare earth magnets should work well if anyone's got one of these things and they've got a better solution feel free to leave a comment there we go and sometimes it just takes time and now once that first bead is or the initial bead is broken it's easy to do the rest by hand I think that's it yep so to uh, fit the wheel you just want the little pin here upright I find this is the biggest pain in the butt mounting this whole thing is keeping that pin balance so it's upright and then uh, lining it up over one of the holes here yeah there it moved so yeah this is uh, another thing if someone's got a better solution to keep that pin upright please leave a comment there we go and now we just take our centering cone make sure that's mounted get on our duckbill adapter get the big old bar tighten her down and fit our duck head or duck bill get it on there nice and tight and tighten our knobs down get out our tire snot lube things up really good on the rim too because the duck bill is sliding around that rim I like putting a little bit extra where I'm gonna start now I'm not gonna fib you here this is what took a little bit of practice getting the tire iron you want this little slight hook end not the hard hook just the slight curve getting that down in the wheel dish there we go and then you just bring it over the top of the duck bill there and you kind of pull back so the lip of the tire bead is over the top of the duck bill and I like having a rag or something just to put between the rim and the tire iron in case the tire iron slips out and crashes down on the rim and then you get your bar stick it between the center post and the duck bill adapter arm 
and just start walking it around. There we go. Damn <laughs> microphone cord in the way, but you get the idea. Top half done. So the backside bead is usually easier than the front side, but on these uh, big old 235 45R20s, that's not the case. Have to use the duck bill to remove them as well, or it as well. Again, I've just got the tire iron wedged between the duck bill and the bead, pulling it over. Where's my rag? Ah, nuts. You notice I've got a tie strap on the tire. That's just to prevent the tire from spinning with the uh, duck bill as we're breaking the backside bead. And I want to have a rag there in case the tire iron slips. Don't want to mark up the rim. In goes our bar. Let me try to get that out. Camera's going to be in the way. I'm going to have to move it. <laughs> and there we go. Why I had to use such a long one, I have no idea. Probably because that's the only one I could find. There we go. Now we'll just continue on. There we go. And that's it. Remove our duckbill adapter. Oh, that tire's not slippery. <laughs> and not a single mark on the rim. Beautiful. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be putting any new tires on because I haven't ordered any new ones yet. I'm kind of waiting for blackcircles.ca to have their spring sale. Hopefully get a better deal than what these things are going for right now. That will be part three if there's enough interest. I know this is kind of different from uh, most of my videos, but uh, yeah, it's DIY, of course. So it made sense to throw it on the channel here. So hopefully that helped you out if you're thinking of getting one of these manual tire changers and a duckbill adapter. As you saw, it will do fairly big wheels, 235, 45, R20s. There's certainly bigger wheels out there, but it will do those. And uh, yeah, no marking at all. It will come in for a close up. Again, there's product links down in the description if you want to check any of this stuff out. Thanks for watching folks, we'll see you next time and happy tire dismounting.